Yo, what's going on? Hey, Martin. <laughs> How's it going, man? Long time we'll see. Good to see you again. Um, yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. Well, we are we might finally get started this year as far as what we do at Open Source Ecology. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not <laughs> well, I've been keeping, uh, I've been keeping track of uh, that off, but uh, I mean, you're still making progress, so that's great. And you're still around, right? Like, So that's amazing. Um, yeah. No, definitely. I think over all these years, it's you know, it takes time to build a good foundation. I think we're we're at the place. I don't know if you've seen Apprenticeship or the Summer X, Summer of Extreme Design Build that we're hosting this year. Have you seen those things? If I uh, I, I saw an email the other day, uh, yesterday. I haven't actually gone into okay, it. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you read it, yeah, our plans are quite ambitious. So, so we are we're finally starting to train people on a CD go home, like to be actual builders and stuff like that. So, right, so right. like many of these getting built after we train the teams. So, so a real enterprise coming out of that. And also the releasing the supporting equipment with the brick press and tractor, uh, actually sawmill and large 3D printers to be part of that infrastructure. So really doing a lot of development on that work, definitely getting the tractor out as a product because that's like uh, pretty good. You know, the thing that, that I always said, it's, it's just still amazes me how, you know, we've got all these designs that are productization ready and nobody's jumping onto the collaborative development method or just the collaborative enterprise thing. It's, I think most people are probably stuck in a way of thinking, it's like, how am I going to make money if this thing is open source and everyone is producing it? And, and to us, it's missing the, the whole point. But we say, we simply say, well, look, there, that's the reason why there is no perfect diesel engine or the perfect cell phone or whatever. All these things are inferior because all these companies just divide the effort. Here we're saying, hey, look, we can actually make the best thing. There's plenty of revenue potential for everybody. Um, but that's that's a different model of non-scarcity based. Right, it is like you are. It's a really a different way of like looking at the whole world, really. It is, and that's that's I think the biggest challenge because I mean, you know, the right. That's the hardest part of people to like wrap their heads around it. Yeah, like the tractor, for example. I mean, it's. You know, it's ready to become a product and it's like nobody's saying, hey, let's collaborate. So the internship and um, actual, the, we have the, not the internship, it's called the six month OSE apprenticeship, as well as right, the right. three month summer of extreme design build. We're, we're like, we're getting, we're trying to really select for people that believe in that. I think we're doing well so far. Yeah, I saw like, I, I saw like the diagram that has like the onboarding process. So there's like a whole, uh, um, there's like interviews and stuff like that, so I think that that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got we've got that going on, but as far as you know, it's actually finding people who participate in the actual open source collaborative enterprise development, which is what the infrastructure we're setting up. So that's that's good. I think it's um it's coming along. But anyway, so for the so let, let me fill you in the context of the icons thing. So yeah, we're yeah. planning a, a large hackathon this year. Uh, actually, I gotta leave at like two thirty because I gotta get actually my COVID shot today. But um, uh, is that your first or your second? Second, second. So um. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Great. Cool stuff. Great. So maybe let's just check in, like really update you. So so this August or possibly September. This is it's actually not decided. It's either August or September. We're gonna do a very large hackathon, and the main goal of that is to release the full pub publication of the CD Go Home with the new model and up to the enterprise information of how you run a business doing this to create opportunity for anybody and, and we're planning on really a lot of people participating and part of it is so you got to have the CAD you got to have video documentation of how you build stuff you got to have bills of materials and I was thinking the icons because between those four assets they're they're all representing the same thing and if you have those four assets then you can go into just about any piece of documentation you need, such as build procedures, uh, graphics or animations and things. So, for, so the four items are literally one and the same because if uh, they represent the same thing. So, and all of them reinforce each other to the point that you have an unambiguous product that you can define and document and enterprise fully. Because, for example, if you have the videos which show you how much time things take and you have the bill of materials, 
then you can generate economic models that say, okay, and this is our swarm build procedure, you can generate full assets of how to do this uh, from the documentation that we have with a huge crowd. So we have tons of cameras running throughout the builds, and we're actually gonna have, one, when we do that in the summer, and uh, we're gonna have like 24 cameras, like two cameras per module, it's gonna be like 12 modules at the same time, crazy stuff, all happening in parallel so we can do it in rapid time. And then of course there's the CAD. A CAD anyone can contribute to remotely, but you can generate the CAD from bills of materials as well as the um, the, doc the video documentation. You can see this is a part. Okay, you buy that at Amazon. You buy that in your 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 local hardware store or online. So you have information that reinforces each other. And the icons I think are a great organizing way. You might have seen the open source ecology or the open source technology pattern language where we represent things using icons. Like a car could be represented by here's a wheel module, here's an engine module, here's a frame module. So you can create icons for just about, uh, you can go either right. to yeah, module, Those parts relate to each other. Right. You can right. take a module, for example, and say, oh, this module is made of all these sub, -module, sub parts, which are icons. And I think getting people around this graphical design language could really facilitate the whole development process and could be great for pub publishing, too. Because one of the outcomes, the yeah. outcome of the, yeah, of the extreme, we call it the Extreme Enterprise Hackathon, it'll be a publication. One is like a 2,000 page comprehensive A to Z step by step build instructions and everything about the thing including how you design it. And the second one would be more like a coffee table book, probably like 100, 200 pages of, here's how we solve housing. What does it mean to solve housing? And here's what we offer to do that with open blueprints, open machines, to get the highest quality product at the lowest possible cost. So that's kind of the outcomes. Uh, so I think the, the icons would be critical for, like you, we don't make diagrams. We make, for example, in a, in a book, there's book sections. Okay, so this could have an icon, oh, this is a how-to, this is a uh, whatever, like, so there's process icons too. But, you know, we, you, you did the work on, uh, on OSC icons uh, already, how to, how to get people organized to, to design them. What I'd like to do is have you, so definitely I want to invite you to the hackathon, which would be three days of eight hours each. Um, but in the meantime, in order to enable, like we tried, we had the experiment where, you know, some people contributed the icons. We maybe got like a total of like about a hundred total or something. We, um, we made some progress, but it was some uh, progress. Not, yeah. not overwhelming. It's always about learning how to do this more effectively. And I think right, right. now the next step we can take was, uh, would be to uh, make the onboarding materials for that much easier. So, so things like, you, you already did some work on how do you design an icon and how do you do basic functions within within uh, that was Inkscape based. Uh, right, right. And um, one, we want to up that game and start a process where one team during the hackathon could work on icons. That's one thing. So, so out of those four assets, which then lead to publishing an enterprise. Uh, so the four assets generation and then uh, generate the actual enterprise models and, and book product that comes out of this. Um, the good thing would be, uh, what, where do you think the, the instructionals from the last time stand in terms of making them better, like a super rapid learning instruction? I, you know, you've done the work. I think we could probably take a second cut at it, which is much more efficient. Like, okay, here's uh, more insights, maybe more in-depth, uh, but also very short. It'll be What I envision is maybe like one that's like, three to five minute video that shows, okay, this is how you, uh, the whole process for designing icons and why they're relevant. Uh, kind of what I'm describing to you right now. Uh, and then mm -hmm. the second part is maybe more in depth of how you do the exact execution with the gory details, maybe like a 15 minute video or so, or a 30 minute video on Inkscape. That's kind of like the fast edited video that's really high quality with with zero like zero blank space we can get that edited uh, and stuff like that um, sure so what kind of availability do you have uh, these days um, you, you're doing a lot of other um, work, how much time can you commit to this because because I want to get you going one on, on creating these instructionals because that way we can get a bunch of people and before 
the the actual event we have the apprenticeship which starts july the first so we can actually spend saturdays because saturdays in that the apprentice the called the ose apprenticeship it's a six month thing where the promise is that you get to work with ose full-time if you learn the necessary skills will be glad to collaborate with you or hire you and stuff like that uh, as you set up your own right. enterprise get the opportunity to do OSC related enterprise uh, but during that event starting July we're gonna do Saturday Saturdays are gonna be basically our global doc global collaboration documentation video pr producing days uh, we can work on the icons at, at that time because it's highly relevant to, to uh, it's it's one of those as I mentioned it's a unifying theme just like cat is super important I think an easy to understand uh, graphical language, the open source technology pattern language, kind of like you've heard of Christopher Alexander pattern language. Have you heard of that? A little bit, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. basically the pattern language of how you design buildings and living spaces. What are the patterns that really work? And for us, it's the the modules and the primitive elements that make technology transparent. So in the big picture, you've got the 50 Global Village construction set tools, but underneath that, we've got a running list of about 500 there are the priv primitive elements like an electric motor, right. a solenoid, a pipe, uh, a wheel, this and that. So th that gets you like 80 to 99 percent of all known technology. So, um, right, right. so we want to get to those those 500 icons. The first priority is on the house, though. Okay, so let's break down the house into every single part that we use, including icons that maybe generalize. Like for example, if it's a it's a plumbing fitting, like you probably don't want to do a plumbing fitting like say say a, a T you know, elbow you don't want to do like a separate icon for like a half inch or two inch or whatever uh, we'd want to represent it in a way that for example says oh yeah this, this is maybe there's an annotation there that says like half inch or whatever so we have to be creative and I do want every single part to be documented to the point that a single CAD file can be represented all with icons which means right, you get down right. to the, this is not just an elbow, this is a two inch elbow, schedule 40, you know? So at that level of detail. Now first we can start with the more general things like this is the wall module and stuff like, I mean, I'll show you, let me show you what we've got already. We've already got, if you go to the page on the wiki called icons, look at that what we have already, I'll, I'll put it in the chat, icons. Did you find it or, or I'm typing it in? I just put it in. Oh, there it is. Okay. It's just icons. But um, for example, for um, 500 parts, I started on some things, like if you go to build process and utility icons, you've got stuff. It's all the kind of stuff we pull off the noun project and so forth. But there's different stylistics and things like that. So we wanted to get a, just like we started on, um, so do you remember our last page we worked on? The, what was it? Uh, icon, it's called Icon Source, I remember, Icon Source. Um, so the Icon Source page, that's the work well, you source. did um, primarily. So take a look at that. But what you were doing is, okay, here's a unified stylistics. So here's the second page, Icon Source, that's from whatever, like 2000, what, 14 or something? Uh, how far back does that go? <laughs> Maybe 16 or 17. View history, it says to me, first ever entry on that was 2015, April. April, uh, April 2015. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's been around. It's, I think it remains as a very important topic, unifying topic here. So, um, but like if you look at, for example, the existing icons that we have, um, where are they? Well, if you click on the blog post, for example, you see some of them. They're pretty decent. Like, and, and we want to unify the, the stylistics so they, they kind of follow the same pattern. Uh, I think the borderless ones are good. So, so you see right. me using a lot of these in like, all kinds of presentations and things like that just to make communication easier. But task one is yeah. let's develop all the icons for the house. So let's start with, OK, what are all the parts? Of a, house, a screw, a floorboard, a two by four, a, you know, um, and even the tools that go into that build process. So there's, there's the actual 
build us a house, and here's the tools that we use, a screwdriver, a sliding saw, a, la a level, a tape measure. So we have, like for example, when we make an instructional, you can just use those icons for, don't you have to type measure, it would be almost like language agnostic instructionals, you can say, um, you know, here's your drill and put it next to the thing so you're drilling and that becomes obvious for... Right, there's a drill, there's a screw, there's a piece of wood, yeah. and uh, yeah. and like another piece of wood, and like those go together, and that's it, right. Yeah. Um, absolutely. It's it's clear concept, and then you can talk about, now what about like Blender animators and FreeCAD, which does exploded part animations, well, you have your thing that's done in the icons, just 2D flat, well, you can go into into 3D and you can do the same thing if you have the CAD file uh, and CAD file, say, for the screwdriver, the drill. Uh, you can do that as animations within FreeCAD using a very, very simple process, like Explorer Part Animations Workbench right. does that effectively. Someone who's got higher skill, like Blender, they can do a more, more realistic rendering of how that goes together. So there could be different levels of skill sets working on the whole thing at the same time and all of it collaborating towards a unified product. Does that make right, right. sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's start with, uh, I, I, there's some icons on the icon page. Uh, the first document, actually, I just started this like yesterday, but the, actually the very first document in the icons page is parts. A light bulb, a wall out, because I was actually you know looking at how do you do electrical, so yeah. Uh, electrical box, things like that. Uh, so we want to just start listing them. So if we edit that doc, that should be, let's see, is that readily editable? But we want to start with that. Let's um, let's do that. Uh, let's see. Get link. Anyone, let's have any, anybody be able to edit the document. So the public editor. So there's wire, there's like breaker box. There's a breaker. If you look at let me share my screen maybe um, so you see where I'm at. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, but let's let's start with just the individual parts. I mean there's there's like the individual atomic components, you know, there's a screw, there's a, there's a floor flooring planks, there's a bed, there's a washer. It can go to like a large number of items. This list will end up being like, probably like 2000 items or so. Uh, right. But I think we gotta go to that level of detail. The task for you would be to start with a few examples and get a really nice instructional for, um, well, just capture the screen capture. We can talk about an optimized video edit but the first level would be a first pass through where you can show that with good voiceover. We can then edit mm -hmm. like for finer, like how comfortable are you editing video? Do you use Caden Live? Um, I have some experience, uh, not that much. Mm -hmm. But um, In what, Caden Live or other? Yeah, Caden Live. That was the last time I uh, worked in video editing. Are you guys yeah. still using that? Oh yeah, we are, we are. So. Okay, so maybe, great. Yeah, so maybe the, the one of the assets we got to generate is a really nice um, basic. We should focus on a workflow video for Caden Live edits of instructionals. So, um, so the deliverables are. There's the <clears throat> Caden Live editing editing video, so we'll get somebody to do that. There's the instructional, like you know, for you this would be instructional on creating icons. Right. Um, where's the video from before? You did a video, uh, which was let's see, graphics working team is that where it is? Yeah, that's a good question. Did, did you do a video or was it just like slides? I forget. I thought there was a video that I did for one for one of the I I, I think it was one of the icons. Um, yeah. But it might have been I 
It's possible I did a video for one of the badges instead. Um, yeah, it might have been gotta, the yeah, badges. I gotta... Yeah, I don't actually think yeah, it possibly. was uh, specifically the icons. Oh, wait. A basic tutorial. Wait, where is that link oh, wait, going? where is that? No, that's a, that's a is that document. A it was just the instruction. Yeah, so in order to help people facilitate this, you know, you could parse this in so much time, but the video, of course, is going to be much faster for you to learn. And if you do, right, like, right. You know, even start by expanding upon this text. So let's share this one. Oh, you're already the owner of that. Uh, right, it's, right. Pub <laughs> it's public. Okay. Uh, public editable. Yeah, that's great. So we can continue. On. But I would say like the. Well, I mean, what would be the most efficient use of your time? Do you want to just continue like in a in a written document like this one that expands on this and get gets more into other topics? Like like stylistics would be important. Um, stylistics for the icons. Right, some of the icons for right to keep them looking all the same. Yeah. Right, similar. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because there are certain subjects that require like more detail, less detail, and those are. Uh, some of the insights that will go into like the the more detailed video that you mentioned um yeah because that's like really like sort of nitty-gritty details that it's uh you know like a three-minute video you won't be able to cover all that stuff right um, right so we can so yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by reviewing that presentation and seeing well i want to see what's there i can't remember exactly what it what well what i wrote in those days um, I put the tech link in there if you want to click on that. Um, yeah, super. Here's the house parts icon. So, you know, we've got like, uh, if you look at my screen here still, these things we actually have, you know, like they're in the bill of materials, right? So. Um, right, right. Icons, that was that's what I was going to start with this um, with the icons, with the bill of materials. Um, everything in the bill of materials needs to be have an icon associated with it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so there's a bunch bunch of work. Cool. Uh, here's like okay, there's there's the utilities. Here's more things we got regarding build process, like whole bu whole build modules, like a foundation, floor, and walls. Um, right. Uh, so we don't have the first page is really the the small parts like you know that we need to keep working on but you can start with a light bulb like uh, do we have a light bulb i don't know so so like some of these are the the issue that we're addressing is that making a completely open source uh like public domain set of icons that anyone can use because a lot of the stuff on on i uh for example the noun project you might require attribution which becomes kind of a uh, a, a good administrative task if you're using 2,000 icons. <laughs> so if it's free of attribution, right. just keeping track of all that. Absolutely. Yeah. So we want to be good to the community and and let anybody use these as well as us not having to spend all the time like giving credits at the end of videos and stuff, which uh, people will neglect to do and things, and we don't want to piss any people off. So so we want to do this. Um, but you can take, for example, any icon that already exists for something that's known, and you can just open source it, you know, modify it or stylize it to our methods and stuff like that. So maybe, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So maybe the methodology we follow is um, discuss, because because you don't want to like invent it from scratch. Just build upon what's already there. So discuss how to take, um, how to take an existing icon with maybe a few samples and stylize it so it doesn't violate any copyrights from the original work. Stylize or right. modify to the OSC public domain version. Yeah. Um, so let's see. So where do we go from here? So um, uh, let me ask you, what's, what do you think is the most uh, effective use of your time to, do the, to work on this? Um. Yeah, I think the first step is to to work up this uh, this little tutorial, this uh, this little video, um, this first video. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah I think that makes recording, sense. recording like five minutes or so, like intro and. Yeah. yeah basically, just a, 
explaining like uh, what the use of the icons are and maybe an example or two of how how it works. Um, yeah. One example showing like what a, uh, like how the icons would be used, and another that would show a little bit of this uh, process of like searching for existing icons and basically adapting them to our style. Yeah. Um, yeah. So for example, there there may be like under icons, like like see I I make like for example, this is uh, customer profiles. So this is a diagram that uses icons. So it's an example. Oh, here's how we use an icon. Um, exactly. Examples such as for making diagrams. Like for example, this was the original concept of how we market and deliver the CD go home to customers and stuff like that. So maybe like I'll, I'll example of a diagram and you can you can pick uh, the best way to find recent stuff is if you go on my log MJ log just like JB log um, sure you can find all the stuff Morgan but you know diagrams like this that's an example it's not exactly stylized right, right. It's, a good example. right. it's a good example of uh, how a complex process is made uh, intelligible using icons. That's yeah. basically what we're looking That's for. That's exactly Absolutely. right. Yeah. Right. So um, show example, such as making diagrams, uh, process diagrams. Yeah, the process diagram is absolutely that. What are, <clears throat> so, so what are other example uses? Things like, or uh, explanatory diagrams. Right, you start getting into like uh, different types of processes, right? Like because the the one that you showed there was sort of a strategic marketing level type uh, mm -hmm. um, process, but there are some that are just build processes, yeah, build, right? which like, is a sort of more of a tangible. But you use you you still use icons, yeah, just because so, one is sort of more of an intellectual exercise and another is uh, like real instructions for how to do something um, yeah yeah both so, can be used represented using icons mm -hmm. there's designs of products this product is made of these parts right also absolutely which is sort of, right it's sort of more of a right it's kind of an explanatory um, descriptive type diagram yeah uh, the pattern language pa page, let me uh, open that up. It's a page called pattern language on the wiki. So for example, like if you look at my screen, so these are some of the icons. This is like pretty old. This is like view history. This was first. Right, this is one of the earlier ones. Yeah, that's, that goes back to over a decade. But for example, like to give you an example, you can represent a, a a uh, thing like a car. This was my uh, graphical representation of right. That would be right. This is a really good example. Also, absolutely. That's what a car looks like. It has an engine. It has wheels. It has like yeah. some of the major components. There That's a car, right? Like uh, um, obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so. I mean, the whole thing is we're breaking through people's perceptions of the difficulty or the mystique of technology to make it completely accessible so that people control technology and technology doesn't control us. Um, right. So I think the pattern language, the, the graphical representation is important. Um, so you can talk about identity between for there's so it's CAD bomb instructionals or call it build icon so that's our uh, triumvirate quad quadrumvirate right here that's the thing right and each one can be represented in all these ways um, uh, also, uh, talk about usable in publications as, say, section headings. What's a good example? Of that? You know what I mean by that? Like in certain books, they would have. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, sure. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, headings is a good, good, 
it's a good way to describe it, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, sure. sure. So, so let's continue on that. Um, we can yeah. uh, house parts icons. We can use this as the working dock for. Um, well, we probably want to. Maybe let's, create a copy. Let's do this. Let's do um, file, make a copy, selected slide. So this is going to be icons 2021 document. And this is, and let's make sure this is all shared. Public editor done. So go into this doc. I'm pasting it. Where's that text box here? So look at that latest link. That's the icons 21. Call it 21 icons to hide the fact that it's thousands of them. 21 icons working back because we don't want to scare any people away. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> All right. And then we're going to uh, use this during the OSC apprenticeship and Extreme Enterprise Hackathon. Uh, I'll put links to that. CD go home. Uh, there's a page called. Um, well, let's do this. So prior work, that was the icon source. Okay, I actually got to get going, but let's, um, I got to make Yeah, yeah, really. So um, let's yeah, make you're already running behind, but then. So you've got this working yeah. doc. We can, um, we can continue this, start working on a video. What's your rate, yeah. uh, work rate these days per hour? Do you want to do it as a project? I mean, probably keep track of hours. You've got the work log on JB. Yeah, I'll keep track of my hours uh, in the log, in my log, just like before, sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, hourly I'm charging like uh, 20, 23, 20, it's around there. Um, okay. So we want to Still make, reasonable pricing. So we want to make, make sure we uh, get the value of your time to to get this, uh, I think the foundational doc of how we actually do this with um, yeah. with icons, the, the process for generating them, that'll be the greatest asset we can start on so that we can teach everybody how to do it. Right, exactly. Get a, I mean, whoever's interested, not, uh, not everyone's interested in doing this sort of thing, but yeah, if you're interested, we're gonna lower the barrier as much as possible so that you can like jump in almost right away. Yep. Um, that's exactly that's the, right. That's, absolutely. Okay. Okay. So. Um, thanks, Merchant. I will uh, get started working on this, like, uh, well, no, I'm not so sure today, but definitely tomorrow. Okay. That sounds good. So we'll go from here. So use the working doc and keep logging on your log for transparency. Um, sure. I'll keep checking into the, work lo the, the working doc so we can coordinate the activity there. And then. This is open. This, I'm publishing this video, so this is open for anyone to collaborate on. So we always work openly. I'll publish it on OSC Workshop's Facebook page. Uh, and that yeah. does ask you what social media you're using to publish this stuff now. But yeah, Facebook, it's OSC, OSC Workshop's Facebook page is where we typically publish, and we've got some Twitter and other stuff. But OSC Workshops is a good place. Um, are you on there? I'm not so sure. I can't remember. I haven't been in. I haven't so, used Facebook in a while, but uh, oh, I, I probably was. Yeah, mm. so I'll post that there to invite other people, and we can also post this in our next newsletter and stuff like that. So open invitation for anybody to collaborate on icons, and then for the major hackathon, which includes um, the whole publication of the Enterprise Manual. So yeah, thanks a lot. We'll be in touch. Yeah, thank you, Martin. Okay, take care. Bye bye. Talk to you later. Yep. Later.